100%. Looking forward to that happening. Back up. Yes, we are. Okay. Please connect to chat. Oh my god, I hate life. Why are you not connecting to the chat? Please, Twitch, just help me out a little bit. <clears throat> All right, we all back up in here. Can you guys hear me? My audio checking out. All right, good. All right, now, where were we? Oh, my TV is unmuted. All right, we are in the midst of this fatal four-way match on Friday Night Genesis. Hopefully it doesn't close out again. Just randomly did that shit. That's fun. Xbox trying to jam beam down my goddamn throat just by deteriorating Twitch day by day. Boot to the side of the head there by Bison, who's alone in the ring with Pierre Thompson. All four of these men have taken multiple finishes at this point. He's going to North Light Suplex by Primetime. Vintage match in there in CMB, but not going to end this match. Oh, he actually hit it! Oh my god, that's the first time ever that Peter Thompson has actually hit the Superman punch. And we saw fucking Diablo hit two close lines from hell yesterday on Reality Wrestling. Maybe they maybe they fixed that sneaky or something? I've never seen either of those moves hit this entire season. Now we just see them hit back-to-back -back streams. Monumentous occasion. Test drive! By the Dream on the Nick Bun there. And then a senton right to the chest. Seated sent on Bison rolling out, trying to catch his breath. As Sam with a rake down the back of Thompson. You know, Pierre would love nothing more than to get one over Sam after uh, old Valentine beat him in singles action a couple weeks ago. Is he finally going to hit the Dream Shatter? No, Pierre Thompson counters. Oh, he's going to try to steal it with a roll up. There's going to be a rope break, though. Bad positioning. Dick Bun back to his feet. What is he going for here? Electric chair position. Sam with a couple of. Punches the back of the head, though, going to be able to drop down and save himself as he puts Tim into the corner. <clears throat> Bison about to get back to his feet. Pierre Thompson looking at the lights. Sam puts Tim up to the top rope. And this just had bad news written all over it. Back suplex from the top rope. Nick Bunn landed right on his neck, and he might be done for in this one. As Bison goes for a scoop slam, trying to pick out Valentine. Oh, what a knife and chop, though. As Bison has Sam in position, looking for the Bison bomb. Pierre Thompson back to the ring, though, kick to the ribs. Still a lot to get to here tonight on Friday Night Genesis. The brand new CMB Rising Star Champion Josh Wolf, fresh off of his title victory yesterday on Reality Wrestling. Going to take on Kaiva, Furious Frank, Brett Angel, one on one. Our main event champion versus champion Randy Borton versus Bob Luger. A matchup that could just steal the entire show. As they had a bison bomb hit there on Sam. Nick Bunn looking to pick up the pieces. One, two, no, just a two count. Sam was given too much time. Oh my God, rip fucking John Cone's leg. Bison just kicking it in half. I heard the fucking thing snap. This matchup continues. Fatal four-way. Nick Bunn able to escape that military press into a German suplex. Beautiful German highlight to Valentine. There's Nick Bunn able to turn around though and break it up. Kicking Pierre right in the face. Bison not able to kick out. <laughs> fucking uh, roll out of the ring. Cody outside. 
to Thompson. Is Bison gonna notice it though? Oh, Tim didn't even go over the. Oh, now he's gonna go over the bin. Yeah, Bison is gonna be able to notice that and bring it. Oh no! Oh my God, he kicked out. Bison, Bison bomb again to Sam. Why did they go over the pin combos? Why is he gonna put him in all? Rip in peace. Finisher after finisher after finisher. Sam just keeps getting plowed and then left to die. Bison bomb to Thompson. One, two, three. Are you kidding me? That's the. I think that's the third Bison bomb Pierre has taken in this match. I think that's fucking nine power bombs now. Maybe even ten for uh, the Barbarian as well. Might have tied his own records, get some rapid kicks to the chest. All four of these men are hurting for certain, no doubt about that. Those, uh, oh, maybe gonna finally hit the Dream Shadow? Of course not. Oh, he's finally gonna hit it! No! Pierre the Apple fucks it up for him. He's finally gonna hit the Dream Shatterer. There goes Nick Bunn flying down to the outside of the ring. And this leave. Oh, nope. The Dream going to exit. <laughs> he wants Nick Bunn, apparently. <clears throat> Bringing him up to his feet. Irish Whip going to put him in the ring. Pierre Thompson catches him from behind, though, with a Russian leg sweep. I'd say that Tim is probably taking the... Uh, no, I'd say Pierre Thompson is taking the most damage in this match. He's taking two Bison Bombs at least. I think maybe even three. And a Coney Island Cyclone. As well as a Test Drive. Still kicking out though. Still still kicking. Still alive. Sam Valentine. Eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Pierre going after him. That leaves Bison Bombs in the ring. Of course, Bison not going to go for Nick though. Oh no, back in the ring. He realized the mistake he made. Oh, man. Shoulder thrust. Maybe crack a couple of ribs. Pop up power slam. That's what he knew. He fucked up. Shadow. Sorry. Spinning soul kick attempted by Nick Bunn. There, Bison Bomb. Why isn't he hitting them, though? They're hitting it. I don't understand. Bison get. You, you fucking goober, dude. What are you doing? Sam Valentine, what is happening here? <laughs> Thompson with a backflip. What the fuck? Sam trying so hard to hit the Dream Shatter. It's just not happening. Oh, this match. Fatal 4 is always so, so gold. <clears throat> Oh, Sam Valentine and Bison are down. Two with the Tribeca Flex to Pierre. Straight jacket. Bridge. Pin. One. Two. No. How is Pierre fucking kicking out? You've got to be kidding me. Great time to taunt Tim. 10 out of 10. Nick, that's, I think that's five times I've called him Tim now in this one match. My brain will just not let me, uh, Will not let me forget. Will not let me say otherwise. Timmy boy. Again. Bison counters the Coney Island Cyclone. <clears throat> There's that wicked fucking thigh kick. I think Bison might have just gone for a Bison bomb. By Tim just exchanging pins now. As Tim trying to mount his comeback. There's the forearm smash. There's the inverted atomic drop. And there's the scoop slam. Sam and Pierre on the outside. Tim has the opening here. Can he capitalize on it? <laughs> I think Bison has definitely uh, broken his power bomb record. At least, uh, at least he's. Just as I put some new batteries in, Nick Bunn in his official, you know, technical debut gets the victory.
I know this match had everything, right? First the stream cut out and then my batteries died. But that did not stop Nick Bunn from bringing home the victory after I tried Becca Plex on Bison. And Nick Bunn exuding some of very similar traits to the fallen Tim LaFave. Starting off his career with a big win over three of Genesis' top guys. That's one, what a hell of a way to start off your career at CMV. Beating a veteran like Bison and two up-and-comers like Sam Valentine and Pierre Thompson. What a win for Nick Bunn. What a matchup. That was crazy. We had our stream cut out. We had batteries die. We had like a million finishers. I'm pretty sure Bison broke his record there. I think he hit 11 power bombs, maybe even 12. I'll have to go back and uh, check. Is it lagging? Oh, okay. Dogs are hyped for Nick Pun's win. Nick Pun, get it? <laughs> what a joke, a knee slapper. It was just a throw. <laughs> okay, good, it only lags in the matches, that's nice. Just let me know if it lags. Well, I can see right here, but I'm not looking at my phone. So just let me know in chat if it lags really bad. Ever since they took away the signature, I have no idea if it's lagging. <clears throat> Which is fucked. They added a thing at the bottom that has like how, how long you've been live and how many viewers you've had, but they don't have like a lag indicator, which is incredibly stupid. I don't know why they wouldn't include that like they had on the, uh, the Switch thing. Here we go, guys. After that fatal four-way matchup, Nick Bunn in his debut getting the win. Honoring the life and times of his brother, Timmy Boy. A bright future for Nick Bunn. Up next, singles action coming our way as the leader of the Hellfire Club, the fallen angel, John Reed, makes his way out. An update for what? For Twitch or 2K? John Reed, as I said, you can see it right there on the shirt. Leader of the Hellfire Club, of the Hellfire altercation with Jay Davis. And Davis, along with his Russian bear, Gary Sutton, have decided to depart from the group. Vintage Jay Davis forming those tag teams and then immediately leaving. He should just stop being a team player. He just certainly is not, does not work well with others. Everybody but Gary. He's just not, 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 not too, uh, not too uh, <clears throat> good around. But John Reed going to try to perhaps find himself some New members maybe fish for some new town because Davis and Gary Sokov especially. Those are two big departures from this new stable that was just born a couple of weeks ago. His opponent here tonight going to be none other than Double K, the Battle Beast. Caden Kenra, the winner of the first annual Deadly Games a week ago at Cause and Effect. Got past Sam Valentine first round and a last man stand match then defeated Jay Davis. And finally, dominated Furious Frank in the finals to secure himself that Alpha World Championship shot in the main event against Bob Luger. It was a tables match. It was a great tables match. A lot of close calls. Had me on the edge of my seat. 
Caden Kenner, unfortunately, would end up falling short. Bob Luger, for the second time this season, he's the only man to beat Caden Kenner, and he's done it twice, like I said earlier in the show. Kenner coming out here at the uh, top of the program, top of the night, as Bob Luger was in the ring, addressing cause and effect in his title reign, and what's next? Caden Kenner would ask for a rematch. Bob Luger agreeing. It's not for the championship. Kenner saying, I don't want a title shot. I want to prove that I can beat you, that I deserve to hang with the top here on Genesis. And so they will go one-on-one, nine-title matchup at Emergence. Kaden Kenner certainly needs the momentum heading into such a big matchup. Even though it's non-title, if he wins, you got to imagine a future crack at the title. As John Reed, pullback attack right into a calf kick immediately. Bad way to start. Reed back to the ball breaker stat. Okay. The gut. My bad. Get some water right there. I got this really weird water. It's called the Voss. And it's like, it's a huge bottle. It's a glass bottle. And it's sparkling water. I hate everything about it. It's disgusting. It's giving me AIDS. <clears throat> but back to the action here. Where's my Mountain Dew? I have Mountain Dew, but it's all the way over there. I'm too lazy to go and get it. Not sponsored by Mountain Dew. Kenny Kenner. Vintage Kenra. A little bit of rolling thunder right there that Heidi gets on that is incredible. John Reed, though, no doubt needs uh, some momentum for himself. Scrambling for a win to legitimize you know, the Hellfire Club with the departure of Jay Davis and Gary Sucker. I'm just making it tough. Davis uh, really started off this season strong. A multi-time contender for the International Championship. We never get the job done. Last inside that uh, Elimination Chamber at Dark Carnival. That was a great Sunset Flip Powerbomb to the outside of the ring as Kenner with a boot to the side of the head. Bob Luger, I'm sure, is watching from the back getting ready for his main event clash with Randy Borton later on. Champion versus champion. I cannot wait for that one. We've still got Kaiba versus Josh Wolf to come as well. Mono e mano. Furious Frank, hopefully, going to be taking on Brett Angel. You never know with Angel, though. Referee beginning his count here. Count of five. Currently has Reed with a forearm to the side of the head. Right into the steel steps now. John Reed knows what a big win this could be. Caden Kenra only pinned once this season. That was by Bob Luger. Only been defeated twice. The other by Bob Luger at cause effect. And that tables match as Reed again going to throw him into the steel steps. Oh, guys, a tweet here from Sean Silva of Rise. He says, finally, I'm shown the respect that I deserve from Bob Luger. He's offered me an Alpha World Championship match at homecoming, and I will gladly accept Luger. Your pride will be your downfall. So Sean Silva accepting Bob Luger's championship uh, challenge at the top of the show. That's when Ken and Kinder came out to interrupt him. So homecoming, I guess we have a match set. It's got to be official, made official by general manager Dave Turner, but... Sean Silva, Bob Luger, toe to toe, maybe for the Alpha World Championship. That sounds like one hell of a collision. Luger, for the time being, got to be ready for Caden Kenra as the battle beast in a tough way against. Oh, Reed right now, able to dodge that super kick. Missed that clothesline. Into the corner now from behind. Reed catches the elbow to the side of the head, goes for hook to the jaw. Caden Kenra maybe thinking for. Uh... Oh, there, that super kick. Out of nowhere, shades of one CMB Hall of Famer, Paul Anderson. <clears throat> With that one. Gotta watch out for erratic static, though, as Caden Kinner has to look out for the fall. That's what Reed's sizing him up for right now. This is taking down many a men. Up over the shoulders. Face first. Bam! Down into the canvas. Connecting flush. Hooks the leg. One, two. Just a two count, though. Reed upset. And understand why. He thought that would be enough, as did I. Most of the CMB universe. Caden Kenner has showed his resiliency time and time again this season, though, since returning near two-year hiatus. <clears throat> Last time we saw him beforehand was prior to... Uh, Prior to Ascendance 3, the very last time we saw him was the uh, episode before the third annual Royal Rumble, if I remember correctly. It was a long time ago. Kenner Ken have been just red hot this season. It's really a thorn in his side that Luger's been able to be... Oh! 
Not so kind. I haven't seen him hit the waist lock Larry in forever. Definitely a first this season, but Reed no sell, not like a G, and there's a neck breaker to follow through. I was uh, saying before, though, Reed has got to be on the lookout for erratic static, man. That thing can come out of nowhere. Spinning reverse SEO. Kenner likes to finish off his opponents with as he gets the two amigos. Vertical suplex into a back suplex. Grabbing him by the hair in his head, though. Reed with a short arm shoulder block to save himself. Kick Kenner out of the driver's seat. Stomp down onto the face. Reed going to try for a knee to the side of the head. Maybe, ah! Yeah, go, go, go. Chenra Irish whip rebounds does Reed. Oh my god, that's a uh, axe bomber right there. I think that's what it's called. Just it's pretty much running right into the forearm. You get a cheer drop suplex from Reed. Lateral press, not hooking the legs. That's a big mistake, especially against someone like Hayden Chenra, a veteran of the sport, able to kick out there. Reed into the corner again, chillaxing. Ain't no thing, but a chicken wang says Reed. Kane and Kenner, though, one of the best Genesis has to offer. Two-time Anarchy champion, Reed going for the jumping gooder. Kane can have none of it, though, as he shoots in. Caught with a belly-to-belly. -belly. The leader of the Hellfire Club, realizing what a win like this would do for his career. Another super kick. Not going to go for the pin, though. That might be a mistake. Got to take every opportunity you can against someone like Kenra. Stomp it down to the bicep, man. That couldn't have felt too good. I've never been stomped in the bicep before, but can only imagine that it doesn't feel pleasant. Let's get another rolling thunder here by Chenra. Right to the ribs. Midsection of John Reed, who retaliates by bringing the back of Chenra's head right down onto his knee. Now looks like a fish drop, keeping it simple. Throwback right there with that one. Props Kenner up into a seated position. Now some elbows straight to the chest. John Reed working him hard right now. As the fallen angel has him lined up. Kenner perhaps going to be pinned for the second time this season. The fall dose into the pin. One, two, three, and John Reed gets the victory. Not great for Caden Kinner heading into that big matchup with the Alpha World Champion Bob Luger next Sunday at Emergence, but a colossal win for John Reed here, becoming only the second man this season to pin and defeat Caden Kenra. And that is a lot of momentum, much needed momentum in the pocket of the Hellfire Club leader. <laughs> God, I wonder what's going through Bob Luger's mind right now as he was surely watching this one in the back on the monitor. Kaden Kinner, no doubt, going to be upset with himself, getting into a bit of a rut. Maybe he can turn it around for himself, though, next Sunday. A win over Bob Luger would erase all of this. John Reed marking his territory. Great win for the fallen angel. Can he pick up the Hellfire Club for the scrambles it's currently in? Excuse me, getting another drink from that horrific water. You got to do what you got to do to survive, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and a tweet, guys, from Bob Luger. As I said, he was indeed watching. He says, going to have to step your game up, Mr. Battle Beast. A little bit of friendly trash talk there from the Alpha World Champion who's still going to be set 
to take on Randy Borton later on tonight in our main event, champion versus champion. Super pumped for that. We've also still got Josh Wolf versus Kyva to go and Furious Friend and Bret Hart, but up first. Tag team action coming our way. Our brand new world tag team champion, Zach Cage and Nick Blake. Looking to kick off their reign with a bang. Still undefeated. And they take on Jace and Zach Hardy of the Misfits, who only have three losses to their name this season. In fact, they went into uh, point break. It was undefeated when they challenged Extreme Conditions for the World Tag Team titles. Obviously, it didn't go so well for them as it did for Cage and Blake. But a win here for uh, old Jason Hardy could get their names put right back into circulation. That championship opportunity. We do know that Eric Thunder and Matt Jefferson have a well-deserved rematch clause to come. Ready to uh, pull the trigger on that, but we'll see how Cage and Blake do here tonight for themselves. And we get a tweet here, guys, from Jay Davis, who says, Hey, DJ, since your brother can't answer since I stomped his face in, how about you do it for him? Me, a lie, homecoming. I'm Jay Davis, referring to the fact that uh, earlier on in the night, Elijah Stewart came out to the ring after uh, deciding to kick off a singles career. Once again, we touched on it yesterday on Reality Wrestling. He got that win over Duke Briggs. Uh, him and DJ deciding to pursue singles careers. Still not, not completely dissolving the family, but supporting each other as they uh, go on the hunt for singles gold. And Elijah Stewart pretty much came out here early night to reiterate that fact to the CM of the Universe, saying he's for the Stewies, and they're finally going to climb the mountain. You know, he says he doesn't want to go for the light heavyweight championship again, maybe the international championship, maybe even the alpha championship. He was ready to compete with the top dogs, Randy Borton, Furious Frank, Bob Luger. And that's when Jay Davis would come out and say, I don't even know who you are, Elijah. You're nothing. And Gary would end up flying Elijah from behind with a steel chair shot to the back of the head. Jay Davis with a curb stomp. Elijah Stewart has been taken to a local uh, medical facility. Back. And DJ was too late to help him out. I guess we'll see if DJ responds to this tweet or not. Elijah certainly ain't going to be tweeting. I don't even know. He's probably not even awake yet. <sighs> He'd be lucky if he ever wakes up from that curb stomp face first on the steel chair. It was a nasty sight. <clears throat> There's only <laughs> the only second tag match so far. Are you okay? <clears throat> <laughs> Too many tag matches. Not even one. It's just not allowed. Tag matches at the cause and effect are banned. Only once a month. But there they are, our brand new world tag team champions, Zach Cage, Nick Lake in the ring, ready to go. Here comes Jace and Zach Hardy of the Misfits. No doubt realizing what a colossal opportunity this is for them. If they can defeat the world tag team champions, hand them their first loss. All but guarantee themselves a future crack of the title after Eric Thunder and Matt Jefferson, of course, get their own rematch. This season has been great for Zach Cage and captured his first taste of championship gold after three years of busting his ass in the Anarchy Championship. Though his reign didn't last long, only two weeks, Britt winning it uh, right back. Now he's become a world tag team champion. That's a lot to say. In the five months we've been here in season three, he's won two titles, whereas the first three years of his career combined, he wasn't able to capture even one. Despite opportunity after opportunity, Cage and Blake saying that they fulfilled their destiny, just as Cole Savage said they would. And they got no plans on letting those titles go anytime soon. Referee rings the bell. It's going to be Zach Cage starting things off against Jace. And a great arm drag by Cage. <clears throat> to throw Jace overhead and get that elbow drop. And here is a tweet, guys, from DJ Moore. Responding to Jay Davis, DJ says, You sure you want to pick a fight with Elijah? He's different when he's fighting for fun. But now you gave a reason to take it to the next level. Elijah will accept he ain't scared of you or your overgrown pet. So I guess we have a matchup added to the homecoming card in four weeks' time. Final pit review of the year. Jay Davis, Elijah Stewart, one-on-one. -on -one. Hopefully Elijah, you know, no permanent damage done. Still no report. Like I said, we're sticking to a medical uh, facility local to the area here in New Jersey. You know, leg sweep by Zach Cage. Zach Hardy, now the legal man. 
As I said, Zach Hardy and Jace, the Misfits, only taken three losses this season. And they were undefeated uh, heading into Point Break, where they themselves actually challenged Extreme Conditions for the titles, and obviously a failing effort. Ghost are sent on his cage. Zach Hardy able to move out of the way. Sure, Eric Thunder and uh, MJ no doubt watching this one. I don't know if they're backstage or at home, wherever they are. Watch out, John Cone. Suplex there by Hardy. After this matchup, guys, one-on-one, -on -one, we are going to see the brand spanking new CMV Rising Star Champion, Josh Wolf in action. A huge opportunity as he takes on the number one contender to the International Championship, Kaiva. Kaiva going to battle Randy Borton next Sunday at Emergence for the belt. We're going to see Borton in action in our main event against Bob Luger, champion versus champion. Double leg drop to the midsection of Cage. There's Zach Hardy saying, Cage, bring it on. That's all you got. You're the tag team champions. Cage and Blake are undefeated. They have been a phenomenal tag team. I've never seen two men out there work together so well, so quickly. This meshed. Of course, Nick Blake was kind of dispatched to Cage by Cole Savage as his like, bodyguard, you know, tag along type. And they started actually teaming together in the ring. Just, oh my God, a whisper in the wind there by uh, Zach Boy. Brought to a vertical base, gonna try to put him in the corner. Perhaps we're gonna see a squash as Cage and Blake took their first loss. Tag out to Jace. We haven't seen this in a while. Is that buckle bomb and Zaguri combination? Jace now the legal man, hooks the leg, looking to finish. Huge win this would be, but Blake gonna make the save. And how about the comeback story for Blake? The end of last season, cashed in Money in the Bank, become the first man to ever cash in and lose. Certainly uh, down in his luck, then Cole Savage decided to take him under his wing, give him a new home, and it's done him wonders. Blake doing amazing this season. As Cage, after that fisherman suplex, that botch flex, letting out a mighty roar, trying to mount a comeback here. I'd make a tag if I were him as he snaps the leg, not once but twice of Jace. Might have wasted his opportunity to try to try to get a comeback going there. As Jace now brings him to his feet, closes him for a grapple cage. Kenneth's going to go for another botch flex. No, no, he's not countered by Jace. New Norton Lights. Beautiful reversal there. What a transition. 10 out of 10 by Jace. Into the corner he goes. And perhaps a second cage going to change positions. Note to the regular tag here. From the Misfits, double Irish whip. Nick Blake coming in, trying to talk some sense into the Misfits. Double shoulder block. Zach Cage is getting Molly Watt. Remember, Cage was actually eliminated at cause and effect. It was an elimination tag match for the uh, titles. It came down to Nick Blake versus Eric Dunner. Matt Jefferson, 2v1. Nick Blake clutched the fuck up, as was the, the theme of the night in many matches to capture the titles. <clears throat> Cage saying a lot of people, you know, saying it was all Nick Blake that... If it was up to Zach Hayes, they would have lost. They wouldn't be tag team champions. Look at that teamwork right there. Nick Blake, Zach, Jack grabbing Hardy. And a knife edge chopped to the chest. Amazing teamwork between these two. You can see why they're the world tag team champions. Punch to the back of the head. Grabbing him by that chrome dumps, Whipping him into the mat. <laughs> oh, vintage Zach Cage sweeping the dust over towards Zach. Nothing but disrespect meant via that gesture. Action roll by Zach Hardy. Nice drop kick. Doesn't take down Cage, though. As Cage is he trying for here. What a reversal by Hardy into a victory roll. One, two. Wow! Holy shit! Wow! Zach Hardy stealing a win. Cage and Blake defeated for the first time. Their undefeated streak comes to an end. Hardy countering a Tiger suplex. It was looking like into a victory roll to steal the win. What an upset. Oh my God, Cage is out to prove that him being eliminated at cause and effect was nothing but a fluke after people have been saying all week long that you know, if it was up to him, they wouldn't even be tag team champions. And he comes out here and gets robbed via this victory roll. Hardy's stealing it. That sneak, though. And just like that, guys, the Misfits 
put right back into contention for the titles. We know Eric Thunder, Matt Jefferson had their rematch set and ready to go. They haven't officially cashed it in yet. There's not, there's not a date set for the championship match, but what a win for the Misfits, man. Huge upset. What a shocker here on Genesis Cage and Blake take their first official loss as a tag team. Yeah, lucky the titles weren't on the line, huh? That would be that would be fucked if the belts were on the line to get them stolen like that. I shouldn't say stolen. It was fair and square. He just got a lucky count. Oh my god, are you serious? Are you serious? Rex Carter's coming out here again. I'm being told that the Hillbilly's got something on his mind. We saw him earlier tonight. He came out here after weeks of trashing the CMV universe. About an hour ago, Rex came out. He said he wanted to uh, get on the good side of the CMB universe once again. He says he wanted to build sandcastles with them and swing on the swings. And then he'll he'll prove his worth to them. What is he doing back out here? Jesus Christ. This is too much, man. Rex Carter just frightens me. Just genuinely frightens me. What could he possibly have to say now? I mean, remember, he said all that. And then he tried to punch some fan in the front row. Is he going to come out here and trash the CMB universe again and maybe go apologize to that fan? <clears throat> As we get a tweet here, ladies and gentlemen, from Nick Bunn, who says, that was a victory I greatly needed for both myself, my brother, and the things we stood for. I hope I made Tim proud. I hope the CMU universe is a little more comfortable with me taking over the Against All Odds legacy. Kent, the match I had canceled our plans, but what say you to a post-show? We talk about whatever it is that's bothering you. Yeah, I remember Ryan Kent called out Nick Bunn for a uh, a sit-down talk in the ring. Ryan Kent had some things on his mind he wanted to let out. Uh, Nick Bunn agreed, but then Nick Bunn was, was booked in that fatal four-way. I'd say that he certainly earned at least my respect with that win, and I, I'm certainly comfortable with him carrying the Against All Odds motto. Certainly, I'm sure Tim LaFave is proud in the uh, the afterlife, wherever he is. Rip in peace, Tim LaFave. Great win for Nick Bunn. And uh, saying that he still wants to have that talk with Kent post-show. So we'll see if Kent follows him up on that. <clears throat> Kent not booked for tonight. Here he comes. Rex Carter was just out here not even an hour ago. What does he have to say, man? This guy just kills me. <clears throat> yeah, you're all thinking I'm just going to talk about how I'm the greatest, right? Well, I am the greatest, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to call out a superstar named Salim Ismail. He's going to want to hear me out. Rex started calling out Salim Ismail. CMB's very first ever tag team champion. Rex, why, why is he calling out Salim? Oh, well, here he comes. Walking right through the Tron like a G. I mean, Salim's got to be just as baffled as I and the CMB universe are. What the hell does Rex Carter have to say to the Bollywood boy? What could he possibly have to say to Ismail? <laughs> Salami. <laughs> Salami Ismail. A true legend here in CMB. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm, I got. I got to admit, I'm intrigued here. I'm intrigued. Salim's like what, man? Just looking at each other. Salim shaking his head. What's up? I hear you've been looking for me. Well, now you found me. So, what's on your mind? Yeah, Salim intrigued, just as interested as the, as the rest of us. Apparently, Rex has been looking for him backstage too. Let's see what Rex has got to say to Salim. Throughout history, war has turned up people. I don't like war. I don't want war. In fact, I want peace. I want peace with you. But I ain't asking to be friends. I'm asking to be partners. What? Rex Carter wants Salim Ismail to be his tag team partner? 
I mean, I guess there's not much better pick Salim, the very first ever tag team champion in CMB history, but what do these two have in common at all? You want to team up with me? You're hilarious. You're a real funny guy. Maybe we should team up, if only because you make me laugh. Yeah, that sounds good. As long as you keep entertaining me, we can make this work. So Salim agreeing, so long as Rex Charter continues to, to make him laugh. What the hell is happening? The fact that you're willing to form this team with me just proves how great this decision is. You may have some doubts, and I completely understand, but rest assured, I'm in it to win it. Nothing's going to stand in our way. Not other superstars, not either of us. I'll do what it takes to make this work. Rex Carter seems to have this all planned out. He's genuinely interested in this team working. Let it be known that we're putting the rest of the tag team division on notice. We're coming for the tag team championship together. Nothing can stop us. That is assuming we can actually work together. Don't screw this up for us. So Salim is being cautious as he exits the... What is happening here on Genesis, folks? Rex Carter and Salim Ismail, two polar opposites forming a tag team with one another. Uh, I, I have no words. I'm left speechless here. I don't know what to say, honestly. How could this team work? This is too good. This is too good. Oh, my God. I'm crying. I'm tearing up. All right, folks, the action keeps rolling. Hopefully, Rex Carter doesn't come out here for a third time tonight. I don't know what else he could possibly have to say. He even, I can't get over that. Rex Carter and Salim Ismail, a tag team. Like, I, I have no words. I have no words. I give that, I give that alliance a weak tops. But here we go, guys. It is going to be some singles action. The brand spanking new CMV Rising Star Champion Josh Wolf, the inaugural champ after defeating Seth Baker yesterday's main event of Reality Wrestling. I'm going to be taking on Kaiva. Tag team partners they were at Wildcard. They fell through with one another after not being able to coexist. And they've actually been uh, having a bit of a tw Twitter beef these past couple weeks, so looking to hash that out in the ring tonight. Big opportunity for Wolf Kaiva, the current number one contender for the international ship. Former champion gets his rematch at Emergence next Sunday against the current title holder, Randy Borton, of course. We're still going to see an action later on tonight against Bob Luger, champion versus champion. Let's get our first look at Josh Wolf. As the Rising Star Champion. I thought the game was about to freeze again like I did yesterday. I was going to cry. Josh Wolf just building up that anticipation by the universe. I remember the rules of the Rising Star Championship are that only superstars in the first six months qualify for the championship. It must be defended once every two weeks. So Josh is not going to really get too good with about his first defense. And Josh compete on both Fusion and Genesis as any superstar from any brand can challenge for the title. So we very well could see Josh this week, perhaps. As here he comes, Josh Wolf, only three months into his CMB career, rejuvenated after his victory over Bill Maverick at Cause and Vet carried that momentum into reality wrestling yesterday to put down Seth Baker. Hoisted the title up high. Josh Wolf said he'd be a fighting champion. He offered Freddie Osborne a title shot. Feeling he was uh, robbed. Remember, it was supposed to be a triple threat, but Osborne was taken out by Lex Knight and uh, Cameron Harris. He offered Nick Bunn a title shot. 
Obviously not defending his championship uh, here tonight in this match, though Kaiva could technically qualify. He's not six months in yet, but season not even uh, six months old. But this is a non-title match, which means that Josh is going to have to defend next week at some point. As here we go, Kaiva making his way out here. Coming off that loss to Rise that caused an effect alongside Randy Borton and Bob Luger. That trio just simply could not work together. Remember, Kaiva screwed them out of a win last week on Genesis. And there was just complete mayhem in that six-man elimination tag at the pay-per-view one week ago. Kaiva, though, now has his sights set on Borton and winning back that international championship next Sunday at Emergence. Remember, Borton did not pin Kaiva to capture the championship. He beat him in a steel cage match by escaping. I don't remember that Kaiva hasn't been, uh, well, besides being eliminated at cause and effect in the tag match by Sean Silva, he hasn't been in singles action in nearly three months. We'll see if that changes here tonight. Here we go. Josh Wolf, the CMB rising star, making his as he takes the Latvian Kaiva. Randy Borton undoubtedly watching from the back. Trying to get to know Kaiva as well as he can before they come Sunday for the championship. Up next, our event, Fury, Frank, and Brett Angel hopefully in action. Though knowing Brett Angel's antics since coming to Jesus, there's a good chance that he uh, might pull out. Remember the last time we saw him in action, he got himself disqualified. Had one actual match this season. That was against Randy Borton at Regicide. And our main event to go. Champion versus champion. Borton and Luger collide. Josh with a nice jawbreaker there. Staggers. Kaiva now. We got a arm wrench. DDT by Wolf. Josh only has himself, uh, has himself, I should say, three singles victories this season. The first one he got was tainted by Bill Maverick. The second, of course, beating Fear, a.k.a. Bill Maverick, had a cause and effect. And then Seth Baker yesterday. This would be a great win for Josh Wolf. The stomp down onto the arm. Kaiva flopped onto his stomach. Like I said, these two have a bit of a Twitter beef these past couple weeks since uh, Wildcard, where they teamed up. Fate drew them together as they got a crack at the World Tag Team titles. Weren't able to follow through, though. Both men blaming each other for losing out on that opportunity. Get a knee drop down to the side of the head. Kaiva, though, the sweep back to a vertical base as quickly as possible. I'd say Kyber really needs this win much more after taking loss after loss. He's, he's past mostly costing himself the match, like last week on Genesis in the sixth man. But going up against someone like Randy Borton, who only has two singles losses this season, both of which to Beer Thompson. You know, Kyber's going to need to bring his A game to emergence as he brings Josh Wolf. I try to bring Josh Wolf to his feet. Josh Wolf with an arm drag and a bring him overhead. And now Josh, another arm wrench DDT. Josh loves those DDTs, fam. Grabbing him by the hair in his head. Jawbreaker, though, by Kaiva. Sends him stepping back a couple of feet. Oh, and there's a belly to belly taking him overhead. Sweep by Josh. Both these men going back and forth. Neither. Both men refusing to stay down for longer than like two seconds. Tip for Tat as Kaiva to the second turnbuckle. Her body splash, but Wolf giving too much time to move out of the way there. Face first with the canvas goes Kaiva. Up over the shoulders, Josh will contrive for that single knee gut buster senton combination of his. It's coming a vintage maneuver. All that weight down to the ribs. Going to try for the pin. Will that be enough to finish this early on? No, it will not. Only a two count. Seated position after Kaiva goes for a drop kick. Moves out of the way. Does a lot in. The former international champion closes the distance. Full Nelson slam. Vintage Kaiva. And look at that. He ain't waiting, baby. He's got places to be, things to do. He's got a hot date with Randy Borton. An emergence going for the landslide, but Josh will clutch it up the counter. And now Wolf closing in, kick to the gut. Snap, DDT. Hit with some serious velocity and oof behind it. Kaiva no sell, no like a pimp. What a season Kaiva has had. He's actually up uh, the current Glammy noms are on the site, guys. If you're not a member of our website, at communityuniverse.forumotion.com. You can get a link for yourself in the chat by typing exclamation point join. The nominations for the fourth annual Glammy Awards are currently posted. You have all month to vote. And send me a PM before uh, the winners are revealed at homecoming, our final pay-per-view of the year. Kind of a, an option for newcomer of the year. Josh will stomp down to the quad there. 
Close call in this matchup a moment ago when Kaiba went for that landslide. Trying to get back to his seat. The lot being going to help him. Power bomb. Looks like he might have hit the back of his head on that turnbuckle coming down. That did not look fun. Kneeling position. Josh was had enough. Gets off a bunch of the midsection. Drop kick to the knee. Doesn't take Kaiba off his feet. Allows Wolf to get off a third arm wrench DDT, though. <laughs> Wolf taking a second to let a howl to his Wolf Pack in attendance. What a win this would be for Josh Wolf, sizing up Kaiba, but Kaiba pulling out the clutch. And now goes for a hook to the jaw, maybe looking for another full Nelson slam. Not in his future, though. These two got to know each other pretty well in their tag team match. Wild card, Yuranagi side slam. And now Wolf going to give it another go for the second time be the charm. Falcon Arrow by Wolf. Will that be enough? Hooks the leg. One, two, no, Kaiba. Putting that resiliency on display. Josh Wolf thought for sure that would be enough to get the job done. <clears throat> Kaiba not going to go down so easy, though, as Wolf now to the top rope. Not a freaking flyer. We're going to take a risk here, though. Needs to hit something big, I guess is what's going through his mind to try and keep Kaiva down. And beckoning him to a speed. Oh, counters whatever Josh was going for into a beautiful power slam. And now hooks the leg. Kaiva one, two, only a two count. <laughs> Kaiva again gets the full Nelson slam shut down. He hit it before, but his past two attempts have been shafted. And STO by Wolf, the rising star champion, dragging away from the ropes, which sure they know the rope break shenanigans. Hooks the leg. Now Josh looking to steal it. Only a two count. We've already had one huge upset earlier tonight with the Hardys. Or uh, the, the Misfits, I should say. Zach Hardy and Jace defeating Zach Cage and Nick Blake, giving them their first loss. Not a great way to kick off their uh, championship reign. Let's see if Josh Wolf can get his own upset as he goes to the second turnbuckle. Kyle in position, beckoning to his feet yet again. What does the Rising Star Champion have in mind here? Hurricane Rana, all right. That's nicely done right there. Don't take Josh Wolf's a Hurricane Rana type of guy, but I guess showcasing his, uh, the, the variety of his offense. I don't know if he's gonna be able to make this jump though. Yeah, he fails horribly. I don't know why he was gonna try that. Blue Thunder Bomb connects one. Two, only a two count. I'm sure we'll see a ton of those later on in our main event when Randy Borton takes on Bob Luger. Second turn, but oh man, he's really loving this Hurricane Rana as Josh Wolf. Look at that cheeky grin on his face as he goes for a oh no, DDT by Josh Wolf. That was nasty. The master of the DDT pulling out a new variation, a curb stomp to follow through. Kind of getting whopped right now, boy. As he lets out another howl, the universe responding on their feet for Wolf. As he sizes up Kaiba, the rising star champion, a second dose of the Falcon Arrow. Into the pin as quickly as he can. Hooks the left. One, two, three, and John gets the win. What a victory for Wolf. Unfortunately, for Kaiba, though, that's going to hinder his momentum. The first time he's been beat in singles action. Uh, via pinfall submission, first time he's been pinned in, in ages. Josh Wolfman, what a way to kick off his reign as a rising star champion. I'm sure Borton has a on his face backstage. There's the second Falcon Arrow that got the job done. Wolf able to bring home the victory here on Genesis. Man, that went over fear. That cause and effect has really rejuvenated him, really given him a kick in the ass. He's been doing great for himself. Whoa, wait a minute. That's, that's Sebastian Michonne of Rise, the Frenchman jumping Josh Wolf. Reverse STO to the Rising Star Champion. Not given a minute to celebrate this huge victory here tonight over Kaiva before he's jumped. 
as Kaiva says, fuck this shit, I ain't helping, fam. Kaiva's getting the hell out of here. Joshua trying to repel this attack as he kicks the shit in the gut. Sebastian, though, not wanting that DDT. What could the Frenchman want with Josh Wolf? Fry headlock by the Grenoble Nightmare. Irish Whip going to put him in the corner. Looks like it's going to be a snake eyes from Bashan. Maybe dispatched by Sean Silver, perhaps working on his own motives. Bashan with a hook to the jaw. The Grenoble Project. Bashan. What is the meaning behind this attack on Josh? What maybe, maybe put himself ahead of the pack for a shot at that Rising Star Championship, or perhaps just sending a message. Either way, Josh Wolf, the celebration has been cut short with Sean standing tall over him. Sebastian Bichon carrying out an attack on Josh Wolf after his victory over Kaiva. Kaiva didn't even almost. He immediately got to his feet and was like, yeah, nah, I'm out of here. Fuck you, guy. Fuck you, guy. Leaving Josh Wolf to be decimated by the Grenoble nightmare there. Again, what was the motive? Is he is he putting himself ahead of the pack for a Rising Star Championship shot or maybe on the orders of Sean Silva to make an impact? Either way. It is now time for our co-main event, my friends. Furious Frank. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brett Angel. Hopefully toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brett Angel after Angel had a sit-down meeting finally with Turner. Brett Angel's been skipping out on his matches for the past two months. Finally, the two sitting down and Angel giving Turner a set list of his demands. What he's going to require from Turner... No ifs, ands, or buts about it in order to compete. Dave Turner kind of laughing right in Brett's face, tearing up the paper, saying, Are you me? There's no diss from you. And Brett Angel said, Are you going to give me what I want? Or are you going to lose your top star? So, Turner has complied to the demands. Or Brett Angel isn't going to come out here. We're about to find out. Furious Frank, though, the alpha male in a foul, foul mood. After failing to win the Deadly Games tournament, he made it to the finals after getting through Bison first round and then Ryan Kent second round. But Caden Kenner, man, I've never seen Furious Frank dominated like he was at the hands of the Battle Beast. After the uh, show, Furious Frank livid. The doctors thought he might have suffered a... Uh, a broken rib, but, but Frank we're giving a clear bill of health. Frank saying he is not done. He has still got his sights set on that Alpha World Championship. And this just might be Brett Angel's biggest challenge yet. Furious Frank is bad enough on his own, but when he's pissed off, I feel like I'm too close to the action. I feel like I want to go up in the cheap seats real quick. Just get away. As here he comes, the legendary. There's nobody quite like Brett Angel. We've not gotten to see him at all since coming to Genesis. He's only had one actual match, and that was against Randy Borton at Regicide. They have a uh, an option for match of the year currently on the fourth annual Glammys. They got my vote, man. What a mad match it was, and Angel falling through. And ever since he came to Genesis, he's been really just peeved about one thing that Turner said. Turner, when Brett Angel was first signed to Genesis, said, you're a nobody now, Angel. You're starting from the bottom. Your accomplishments on unmatched intensity, they're nothing here. And that just really got under the skin of Brett Angel. 
That's why he's been flaking out. He's had many matches booked since then, but he's been bailing or even he got himself disqualified. These two actually were supposed to face in a handicap match. Angel was uh, a little bit miffed. He wasn't included in the deadly game, so he challenged three of the men. He, he, I think it was Furious Frank, Ryan Kent, and Kaden Kenner who was supposed to fight, but then he got himself disqualified before the match started. So let's see if, if it actually happens here tonight. Has Dave Turner complied to the demands? Or is Angel going to cause a ruckus yet again? Here we go. Furious Frank, Brett Angel, co-main event of the evening. Of course, Brett wearing that Angel is unmatched shirt. Well, oh no. What is Angel doing? Brett Angel immediately leaving the ring. Forcing Furious Frank to follow him. Furious Frank in pursuit. Angel immediately exits out of the other side of the ring. Come on, Angel. This is ridiculous. He's doing it again. I mean, I'm a big Brett Angel fan, but this is just, this is insulting to everybody else on the Genesis roster. Brett is getting paid to compete, and he keeps flaking out in his matches. Again going to exit the ring. Furious Frank, man, if he wasn't pissed before, he is livid now. This is ridiculous. Angel going to the far. Oh, grabbing a steel chair. Frank hasn't seen it. Bro, Frank takes it from him, though. But Angel catches the leg. Lariat. Right down onto the chair. Angel with the chair in hand again. Frank gets to his feet. Counters the chair again. Frank is having none of it. He knows what a big win this would be over Brett Angel. He is not allowing Angel to flake on this match, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, catches the elbow right to the side of the leg. Frank is beating the shit out of Brett Angel right now. Angel, though, with a short arm clothesline yet again. And Brett, oh, the ref's currently at a count of seven, ladies and gentlemen. Angel back in the ring. Maybe he's decided to finally compete. No, right out of the ring. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. Angel just shaking himself off. Angel's having absolutely none of it. He's got the steel chair in hand again. He really wants to get himself disqualified here. Back into the ring. Oh, right across the head. And Angel has been disqualified. Once more getting himself tossed out. Furious Frank wins via DQ as Angel just having himself a cheeky laugh. This is ridiculous. Like I said, I'm an Angel fan, but come on, man. You're getting paid to wrestle for these fans. You're taking their hard-earned money, and you just keep spitting right in their face, in the face of Dave Turner and everybody on the Genesis roster. This is getting ridiculous. Yo, I got that VC on deck, boy. Don't worry about it, all right? I actually bought the uh, fucking accelerator pack. I don't do that VC shit, Hemi. <laughs> I unlock everything right away. I ain't playing fucking career mode. No, thank you. That shit gave me AIDS for the hour that I played it. But uh, Angel, apparently, I'm going to assume Dave Turner followed up on his uh, promise to not abide by those that, that, that set list of demands that's what i'm going to assume that's why angel did what he just did yet again i'm just i'm disappointed man i was so excited for brett angel to come to genesis and see him in action some dream matches come to fruition and then he does this it's just it's getting tiring i'm sick of brett angel and most of the cm universe agree with me a poll on the website asked how do you feel about brett angel uh you know, giving dave turner these demands and uh, a portion of the CM Universe said he deserves it. He's Brett Angel. Look at all of these done. But the majority saying that he doesn't deserve to be treated any better than the rest of the Genesis roster. So I don't know, guys. I, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to see Brett Angel actually have a career here on Genesis or he's going to keep himself disqualified. But uh, that's unfortunate. I was excited for that match. Frank is... I, I can't imagine. Frank's probably tearing off a fucking door backstage right now. But it is time for our main event, a match that I know will actually go down. 
champion versus champion. As here comes the Moo Moo Man, the Milk Man, the King of the Ring, the Superstar of the Year, Randy Borton. And Borton has a chance to become a uh, two-time back-to-back Superstar of the Year. He is an option for the Glammies. He's also got an option for, I believe, Face of the Year and Champion of the Year. As you see that belt firmly around his waist, captured it a couple of weeks ago on Genesis in the side of a steel cage, defeating Kaiva. He will put it on the line against the Latvian next Sunday at Emergence. Of course, this man, along with Kaiva and his opponent here tonight, Bob Luger, failed to work together at cause and effect against Rise. The animosity between all three men just too much for them to handle. And now Borton and Luger have a chance here to hash out whatever beef may linger between them and what could very well steal the show. Yeah, Bret Angel pulled his antics yet again. He was toying with Furious Frank, kept exiting the ring and then getting back in, exiting, getting back in. Frank kept chasing after him. Finally, Angel got a chair. He tried to hit Frank with it. Frank actually took it from him. Beat the shit out of Brett for a couple of minutes. And then Brett finally got the chair back in hand and got himself disqualified yet again. As Bob Luger makes the CMB Universe await his arrival. Here he comes, still the CMB Alpha World Champion. Bob Luger in his third month with the belt. The only man, the only Alpha World Champion so far, there's only been two others, Tim Lefebvre and Furious Frank. He's the only one of them, though, to defend the championship. He's done it twice. And apparently, he uh, offered that title shot, remember, at the top of the show to Sean Silva. Sean Silva uh, accepting via Twitter. I haven't heard anything from Dave Turner officially uh, setting that match, but we do know Luger will be in action next Sunday at Emergence against Caden Kenner in a non-title match. And Bob Luger is suffering from a minor rib injury after that tables match he had with Kenner in the main event of cause and effect. Remember, if... If you uh, watch the match, he repeatedly slammed Luger ribs first into the uh, table, the corner of the table. And when this match starts, he's got the shirt on right now. But you'll see that he is currently taped up. That's going to be a big target for Borton. International champion, alpha world champion, a one-on-one -on -one for the first time since Battle Scars earlier uh, <clears throat> this year, his last season, that these two went one-on-one. -on -one. And Randy Borton emerged from that match with the victory. That was many moons ago, nearly eight months ago. Both men certainly have changed a whole lot. Borton with that enziguri after Luger kicked things off with the final cut. And there you see that the, the, the ribs are taped up. It's always, it's always a question of should I in wrestling when you're injured. Of course, you want to tape yourself up to prevent further injury. But then it just paints a huge target. It just tells your opponent, yeah, attack me here. As Luger go for a gator roll. Transitioning into a cross face. Not looking for the submission. Just trying to wear Borton down a little bit here early on. I'm sure Kaiva is, is watching backstage. As is Kaden Kenra. He's going to back up with there by Borton. Closes in to the DDT. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Going to lock in a camel clutch. That's oh, is he gonna be able to get no? Oh, is he? He's reaching. I'm pretty sure he just touched. He touched the rope multiple times. The referee not calling for the rope break. Instead, Luger has to escape on his own there. Throwing Borton back. Borton, no doubt. Even though he's the current international champion, has his sights set on that Alpha World title and a victory over Luger. <clears throat> Could put him right up top the uh, rankings for a future track of the belt. <clears throat> Borton, a former two-time undisputed champion, as he goes for a springboard elbow right to the ribs, man. Right directly onto those bandages. Borton dropped that elbow. Showing us immediately that there ain't going to be no mercy. As Luger hammers away, a couple of shots square to the face. Remember, Borton has only suffered two singles losses this season, and both of them to Pierre Thompson. So Luger could perhaps become the third, whereas Luger hasn't taken a singles loss in a... Shit, I don't... I don't remember the last time. I don't think Luger's taken a singles loss since he won the championship back at point break from uh, Fury Frank inside that Hell in a Cell. I don't think he's he's lost one-on-one -on -one to anybody. Two great records clashing here. In the main event, two fan favorites to see him. The universe certainly split right down the middle as we get a back elbow from Luger. 
Looks like a backbreaker. That went right down onto his uh, his bandages. Although that might have hurt him just as much as it did Morton as he hooks the leg here in the middle of the ring. Only a one count from the Moo Moo Man. And here is a tweet, ladies and gentlemen, from Josh Wolf, who says that attack wasn't out of the blue. Rise has been attacking champions for the past month. Wait a minute, Luger. Paying homage to the fallen Tim LaFave, almost bringing a tear to my eye with the Coney Island Cyclone. Into the pin. One, two. Just a two count. I'm sure wherever Tim is, he's smiling, appreciating that nod, but it wasn't enough. Luger immediately going to try to follow through with the Luger landing. Not able to get it, though. Borton able to clutch up as we continue that tweet from Joshua. He says that attack was not out of the blue. Rise has been attacking champions for the past month. I will still address my title reign after the main event. Hope Turner will still be in the building by then since we need to talk about what's next. So Josh Wolf still going to go through with his uh, plans to address the CM Universe in his title reign tonight. Apparently wants to have a talk with general manager Dave Turner as well, but of course, referring to the fact that Sebastian jumped him after his victory over Kaiva a little bit earlier on. You still don't know what the exact motive was. Sebastian working on his own to assert himself into a, the, the championship <clears throat> picture. Or working on Sean Silva's orders as Luger now with a shout out to his papa. The legendary Lex Luger with that torch rack into a neck breaker. Transitions over to the pin. Going to try to finish here. Not enough though. The international champion able to stay alive for now as Luger immediately... Lines him up, looking for that Luger landing. This time he's going to get it. Head first down into the canvas. Looks like Borton going to take his third singles loss this season. Will it be enough? No, it will not. The king of the ring, the superstar of the year, the milkman, able to stay in it. And Luger seeming a bit baffled. These two men know each other very well, though. Like I said, the last time they went one-on-one -on -one was way back when at Battle Scars, where Borton got the victory. They're actually bitter rivals back then. There's certainly some animosity between them currently, but I don't think there's any hatred as Borton drops the uh, boo right to the chest. What up, Hardline? Oh! Moo Thunderbomb! One, two, only a two count. Not even, I don't think. Just at the count of two, maybe. As Borton, look at that, stopping right down onto the lower spine. Yeah, Borton gives no fucks. As he scales to the second turnbuckle, you know, Borton didn't become a, a two-time Anarchy champion, a Money in the Bank winner, two-time World Champion, two-time International Champion by taking it easy on his opponents. Phenomenal forearm from the second turnbuckle there. Borton gets in that ring and he gets the job done, no matter who he's against. We get a snap there from Luke Rose for a dropkick. Who's out of the way? It's a Borton man, the Borton man, that's a new nickname. I'm gonna say the Moo man, then I tried to say Borton, then it just got mixed up! Borton! Catapult! Borto end! The fans chanting, this is awesome! One, two, only a two count. Both these men cannot afford a loss where only one man can walk out with the victory. Borton, hands on his head, he can't believe it. Gonna try to stay in the driver's seat though. Couple of Close lines, ducks Bob Luger's desperation and close on attempt. There's a single knee backbreaker to finish off the comeback. As he brings Luger to his feet, Mood Thunderbomb a second time. Will this be enough? One, two, no, just a two count. Borton knows, as I'm sure Bob Luger knows, it's going to take a whole hell of a lot to keep down either one of these men. Borton going to take a second to appreciate his milkamaniacs in the audience. Letting out a mighty roar. Not planning on taking the loss here tonight. Sizes up the Alpha World Champion. A second. Borto end. Whoa, win this would be for Randy Borton. Handing Luger his first loss in months. One, two. No, just a two count. Borton is livid. He thought for sure that would be enough. Luger back to his feet. European uppercut staggers Borton. Luger closes in up with the shoulders again. Looks like he's going to go for that torture rack neck breaker a second time. What up, Sam? Main event currently ongoing. Champion versus champion. Luger might end it right here, though. Will this be enough? No, almost. 2.9999999. And Luger with a stomp down to the back, almost telling Borton just stay down. 
as he sizes him up for a second. Luger landing. Dragging away from the ropes, making sure there ain't no rope break shenanigans. Hooks the leg. One, two, three, and Bob Luger gets the win. Now technically tied a one and one. Other matches were certainly uh, quite far apart. What a collision though. Bob Luger heads into emergence with a head full of steam as Borton takes only his third singles loss this season. Will Caden Kinner be the one to stop Bob Luger's seemingly unstoppable momentum? Borton, though, on track with Kaiba, though. Both of them get ahead into emergence with the losses. They collide for the international championship. What a match, though. Both men showing their resilience. They beat the hell out of each other. Luger surviving two Borto ends to come back, hit that second Luger landing, and secure the win. Bob Luger, injured ribs and all, came out here and got the job done. The Alpha World Champion stands on top as Genesis goes off the air. A great episode. I just, I just wish we could have seen Furious Frank and Brett Angel, man. I was actually really hyped for that match, but yet again, Angel gets himself disqualified, sending a message, no doubt, to general manager Dave Turner. Sebastian Vachon jumping Josh Wolf after his matchup. The Rising Star Champion set to address his title reign a little bit later on tonight. So make sure you check us out. Communityuniverse.formotion.com Exclamation point. Uh, join in the chat if you want a link. If you want to catch out what Josh Wolf has to uh, say. We also had Salim Ismail and Rex Carter form a tag team. I don't know how in the blue hell that is going to work. Huge upset. Zach Carty and Nick Blake taking their first loss as the Misfits steal the win. Zach Carty with a victory roll on Zach Cage. John Reed with another huge upset to defeat Caden Kinner, giving him only his third singles loss this season. Nick Bunn, his official debut, winning that fatal 4 way Rex Carter turned face, apparently. I don't know. Rex Carter was too much for me to handle tonight. And a good win for Bryce Hurt and Tito at the top of the show there. Give me a second before we head on over to the live event. Ooh, and we have a news alert. That's never good news. Maybe an injury. Let's see what that newsletter is first and foremost. I would say someone in the Fatal 4 way probably. Oh, no, Bill Maverick has made a complete recovery from his uh, concussion, whereas Pierre Thompson suffered an injury in that uh, Fatal 4 match. Not surprised. He took probably like seven finishers from all three of the other guys. That was a pretty, uh, pretty nasty four-way for him. All right, we are going to see the dark match. We're actually going to see it, but the dark match is going to be, I believe it was a one-on-one -on -one. Encounter between DRH and Richard Franco. Gonna have Zach Peterson watching his back. As Richard Franco, of course, will be joined. <clears throat> Whoops. By Griffin and Drake. Do, 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 do. Then the match I'm actually looking forward to. Mercantile and Elijah Stewart one-on-one. -on -one. Should be a good match. Yeah, Maury, by the way, I spent like a good hour trying to download Elijah Stewart. And it's there's a logo on there that's corrupt. It downloaded ten logos, by the way, Maury. Please chill. But it downloaded all but one. I can't I can't get that Elijah. There's a logo on there that's just not downloading onto my game. <clears throat> I don't know which one it is. Check it out after. I'd let you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Best friends forever. Josh Wolf, DRH, and Zach Peterson. Yeah, there's a corrupt logo on there somewhere. I'll try to download them again after the show, but I tried for literally an hour to download them last night, and <clears throat> it would not. Let me got Mark and Tell. Oh, whoops. Manager. Got to put Mindy in his corner. As he takes on Elijah. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking second of tires. DJ Moore. Uh, stay in the chat, Moore, after I end stream. I'll start up stream again, and I'll try to download them more time. If that doesn't work, I'll show you which logo it is. Because I got nine of the ten logos, so we'll look at which ones I got, and then you'll know which one is corrupt. It said 10 logos when I downloaded them. Alright. Who we got? Gumble, are you here? Give us some winners, fam. Borton, if you're still here. I think Borton went and killed himself after losing a Luger, though. <clears throat> Winners! Winners! <laughs> Topher finally winning. Topher hasn't won in ages. Ralph's excited. Ralph's like, fuck yeah, Topher won! Actually, I think Topher won like a couple of weeks ago. If I remember correctly. Ralph's a big fan. <laughs> All right, do we need another one, Gumble? Hello, <laughs> Gumble. We need another one, please. Topher, give me someone, you motherfucker. Sister! What, I got the sister, sister theme song stuck in my head right now. I got my own life. I do my own style. My own time. I haven't watched that show in like 10 years. I don't know why that just popped in my head. Batman, Bateman, AC3. I don't think you know my rosters, my friend, so you might have to skip you. Gumble, do another one. Unless you do know someone, Bateman. You can go check my rosters right now, but you gotta be quick about it. <laughs> ah, there we go. All right, Topher and Josh, I need some picks. Yeah, I literally just booked Mark until Topher <laughs> facing Elijah. I got my own style. Yeah, my own style. Sister, sister. Mark Cattell's already got a match. All right, Kenji. Josh, you there, though, fam? I feel like he went off to write his promo. So I have to give us another one, Gumble. Well, I don't know if you know. Do you know my roster, Bateman? If you get selected as winner, you get to choose who competes in the match, but I don't think you know anybody on my show, so...
Salim, all right. Big Salim. <laughs> Maury's happy about that. <laughs> salami. Big Salami is male. Big fan. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, do it. Just give me one second. <clears throat> Rex is too busy turning heel against Topher. He can't be ringside for the match. <laughs> well, aren't you special, Maury? I was lost and now I'm found. Where are we coming to you from here tonight? For this genesis, a lava event. Miami, Florida, getting getting prepared for NGW Checkpoint, Miami, next month at some point. It's five weeks away. Getting the party started a little bit early. I don't think Batman or anybody's on, so you might just be stuck with me for a live event. Well, I got a message from someone. Who's this? Gumble. Stream went down. <laughs> I'm getting back. Yeah, I could join Alvius's party. Just intrude in there and see what's going on. Gumble, get in here. Come, come be with me, Gumble. Be my company. I hate you. I hate you so much. Yo, what's up? Hat. Hat. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, my friend. Let's see who wins between DRH and Richard Franco. This is a singles match. It's going to be Franco of the United Kingdom getting one up over at DRH. Yes, Bateman. My buddy downloaded him and changed him a bit for his character. Couldn't be asked to make one. <laughs> As we get a tweet, guys, from Josh Wolf, who says, I know I've tweeted a lot, but good try to DRH. You'll beat them at some point. Trust me. Josh Wolf giving a shout to DRH there. Remember, it was him and uh, it was DRH, Josh Wolf, Zach Peterson who got in that confrontation with the United Kingdom a couple of weeks ago. Franco getting one up over him there. <laughs> do you, Maury? I do that with a lot of my claws too, mainly for cop show. Because <laughs> I can't be asked to make a whole new claw. It's the dawn of a new day.
Now, we use a lot of, uh, not a lot. Slee Mizmaw been here since season one, though. Cass actually used to watch the show. He wa I think he watched CME for the first three weeks of it. And then I just said, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep Salim though. <laughs> and we've just used him ever since then. Do it, Josh, he won't. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink of my disgusting water. Never, this shit is incredible. A guy, what was his name? Cast6NF, that's who created Salim. Greatest call maker I've ever seen. Love his cause. <clears throat> Give him a solid 10 out of 10. One of his friends actually commented on my YouTube video at some point last season for Vicious and Delicious, and he got mad on me because I changed their name to Vicious and Delicious. They were supposed to be the Megastars, and he yelled at me, but then I told him, fam, there's already a team called Megastars, and he said, okay, I forgive you, and we made out. It was a good day. I don't know. I got to take a picture of this shit, and I'll, I'll post it on Facebook at the site or something. I've never seen a water this arrogant. They apparently had a meeting at the restaurant where my mom waitresses, and so she got like a case free. It's called Voss, V-O-S-S. -S. It's a ginormous glass bottle. It's too fancy and it tastes like shit. I don't understand it. It's probably like ten dollars to a bottle, I bet. That's pretty dumb. Carbonated tap water, though. It's sparkling water, so it tastes even more like shit. I hate sparkling water. I didn't realize it until I, I actually drank it. Because it says Voss in huge letters on the bottle, and then tiny printing underneath it says sparkling. <clears throat> Do it, Josh. Go ahead. 100% I give you permission. As here he comes, the big red machine. The true dark lord archangel. A man known as Markintel. Coming off of that loss to Guri sucking all that cause and effect. Going to try to bounce back here tonight. As he's got Mindy joining him at ringside. A woman we've uh, become acquainted with over these past couple of weeks. Has an, uh, an emotional relationship with Mark Intel. I still don't know if it's if it's sexually I don't know if I call them girlfriend I don't everything about Mark Intel confuses me. I, I don't I try not to make assumptions about him ever. As here we go this is Elijah Stewart in action, my friends, right there, bursting out the front. DJ Moore once again, ringside for that moral support, just as he was yesterday on uh, Reality Wrestling when Elijah got that one over Duke Briggs. Elijah becoming the Giant Slayer. Take down Briggs and then get past Mark Intel. He's officially got himself a match set with Jay Davis in four weeks' time, the final pit of the year, homecoming. Of course, yesterday on, on Genesis, he suffered that nasty attack at the hands of Davis and Sukhanov. Luckily, no permanent damage done. He's right back in action. That's why you got to respect Elijah. The work ethic of this kid. I know, right, Topher? He doesn't even like my show the best. What kind of shit? This is the co-main event of the live event. Hellish show. This match and one more. It's Kenji Murakami and Salim Ismail. Is our main event of the live event. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> if you want spoilers, Hellish, I got you. 
<clears throat> Did not just say so, and I'll try to reframe as Mark and Tell gets a jawbreaker off on the Good Vibes kid. I don't recall a time when these two ever fought one-on-one. -on -one. It could have happened at some point last season, but uh, certainly not recently at any point as Mindy already becoming a distraction at ringside. Mark and Tell capitalizing the Nenzu Lariat. Elijah beginning himself a new singles career, as will DJ soon enough, but they have not fully disbanded their family. They're still going to be ringside for one another, teaming up when they have to. And Elijah might need DJ's support in the fight against Jay Davis. And Gurry sucking off. Nice little reel him in DDT right there. <laughs> I will never let that go, Maury. I can't believe you said such a thing. You broke my heart. Snap in the arm of Elijah trying to tear the shoulder out of his goddamn socket. Mark and Tell, I'd say, definitely needs the uh, win much more than Elijah here. The big red machine hasn't gotten himself a victory in a, in a couple of months at this point. Really failing big against Gurry sucking all that cause and effect. It could have been a big win for him to hand Gurry his first singles loss and give Mark and Tell credit. He certainly put up one hell of a fight, but it simply was not enough. Elijah, though, can't take a loss either with Jay Davis and, and Gurry, no doubt, watching closely. <clears throat> I'm sure Gay is gay. <laughs> I'm sure Jay Davis is simply baffled that Elijah's already back in action one day after he curb stomped him face first onto a steel chair. But that's like I said, the work ethic of Elijah Stewart can rival that of Bob Luger's. Elijah taking, uh, taking no sick days. Mr. No Days Off, that Tilt the World DDG right there. Elijah in the alien position looks like a fisherman just throwing him overhead. The strength of Mark and Tell on display as DJ Moore watches ringside and Mark and Tell lining Elijah up. Gonna go for that. Nope, just not, not the discus, just the big boot. And Elijah able to step out of the way. Now he's gonna capitalize on the reversal as he takes a teardrop suplex. Archangel. Snapmare. Hell's Gay locked in. By Mark and Tell. Elijah having the shit of Mark and Tell press right up against his throat, making it nearly impossible to breathe. He's going to be able to escape, though, save himself. That was a deadly position. He was just grabbing at his arm, too, so the damage to the arm was done. Mindy has uh, already interfered in this matchup towards the start of it. Hopefully, she doesn't again. Good vibes, kid, with a Russian leg sweep right there. Elijah holding the record for most light heavyweight championship opportunities. Never able to follow through. And Elijah, uh, yesterday on Genesis, said he doesn't want to go for the light heavyweight title anymore. He wants to go for the bigger titles. International, perhaps Alpha. He wants to hang with the big dogs, the Randy Bortons, the Furious Franks, the, the Bob Lugers. That belly to belly has encountered a good vibes. And now in the corner, going to try again for that big poot. This time he should get the discus thrown in. Yes, he does. Bam! Teeth right down Elijah's throat. <laughs> the leg. Does Mark and Tell only a two count? I think Mark and Tell holds the record for most nicknames. Big Red Machine, the True Dark Lord, Archangel. As he now sizes Elijah up, no doubt. Gonna look to finish with that falling power bomb of his, but Elijah able to clutch up. Make sure that doesn't happen. Again, can't capitalize though on the reversal as Mark and Tell goes for a pump handle slam. Elijah. Cringing at the sight as Mark and Tell just spitting the blood out of his mouth. I don't even speculate what that could possibly be or where it came from. As he drops the knee to the back of Elijah's head, Stewart having a tough time here. Mark Tell's been dominating as he falls down into the Gator roll. Transitioning into a cross face, looking to wear down Elijah a little bit. Mark Tell doing a great job of grounding Elijah in this match, not allowing him to use his speed as agility to zip around the ring. Mark Tell, former Anarchy Champion, Elijah, former Tag Team Champion, the Dragon! Ah! And Stewart takes a look around. A quick moment to regain some stamina before going for a Buddha lock, perhaps. No. Gonna do some squats here. He's got the uh, legs tied up. Snapping back. That couldn't have felt too great.
<laughs> oh, Elijah! Family matters! <laughs> okay. Damn. Not fucking around as Stewart hooks the leg. One, two, just a two count. I'll be surprised if that was it. I'd honestly be a little bit disappointed in Mark Hattel if that was it as Elijah letting out a mighty roar. Gonna try to keep himself in control. Forearm smash. Another forearm smash. The most overused maneuver in CMB. The catchphrase to follow through. Moves that way. Does Mark Hattel from the stomp. Not want to get caught with some good vibes. Front headlock holding Elijah in position. Making him smell his armpit. Shooting in now. What a counter by Stewart into a gut wrench suplex. I haven't seen that reversal yet. Oh! Good vibes, brother. Into the pin. One, two, three. Oh! Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Never forget the legendary stable. Uh, the Dirty Republic, that was it. Elijah kicking out the knee of Mark Tell. This has been a great back and forth matchup. Mark Tell was uh, dominating for the, for the first part of it, but now Elijah has completely turned things around as Stewart was gonna try for here. Oh, look, that's gonna be that discus form smash out of the corner. Which he uses uh, very rarely. It doesn't look like he's going to look into the pin, though. That's unfortunate. Mark Cattell laid out. Late hooks the leg. Uh, I think Mark Cattell was giving too much time. One, two. Oh, yep, he was. Very close count, though. Elijah arguing with the ropes. <clears throat> Misses that moonsault a second time in this match. And now Mark Cattell looking to make him pay for it. As he lines him up a second go of this falling power bomb. Elijah, though, again inverting sure disaster and a loss. As he escapes the clutches of the big red machine. Now gonna send him out of the ring. Through the ropes, rather. What is he trying for here? Slap to the chest, kick to the gut, slap to the chest, kick to the gut, slap to the chest. My goodness, what a combo there. Going hard on him. Another roar let out as Elijah has Marcatel lined up. Going to try for Family Matters again. Laying him out with the fireman's carry. Jawbreaker hooks the leg. One, two, three. And Elijah Stewart keeps his momentum going. As DJ Moore is absolutely ecstatic. Got to give it up to Elijah. Suffering that brutal by J. Davis and Gary Sokinoff just 24 Go. Comes out here to get this win over Mark Tell after a hard fought battle. Mark Tell's got himself in a rut, ladies and gentlemen. He's got to figure out a way to dig himself out. Mindy Ringside hasn't been helping him out. They interfered once. Now it's towards the uh, very start. Marktel's got to change his plan. Maybe visit Zach Payne's training camp or something. He has taken too many losses. Elijah, though, with another great win for himself. Heading into homecoming. Four weeks time where he does battle with Jay Davis. It's sure to be a heated confrontation. Got that cheeky Facebook ping from cop. Sent me some dumb meme. Vintage cop sending me some dumb shit. Usually he does it at 2 in the morning, so I can appreciate that uh, <clears throat> it's still early. As we get into our final matchup of the stream, our winner match going to see the Japanese buzzsaw Kenji Murakami in action battling Salim Ismail, the new tag team partner, I can't believe I'm saying this, of Rex Carter. Rex, though, not here tonight. He was too busy changing, uh, <laughs> turning heel and face someplace else. <laughs> I 
I don't think anything makes you cringe more in this world than when someone calls cop Mizzy. <laughs> oh, that makes me gag. It's so gay. It's the gayest thing. If you call cop Mizzy, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> you just soil my day. I have blocked him. I block him all the time. Uh, he still comes back with it. Gotta block him permanently. Cop, you bitch. Mori, remember, stick around. We're gonna check out. See if we can get Elijah. What's going on? <clears throat> but up first, last match of the stream. Kenji Murakami, Salim Ismail, one on one. Kenji Murakami been doing very well. Uh, these past couple of months. Coming into this matchup uh, with a loss, though. Unfortunately, it was last week's Genesis had six-man tag. Alongside the family, actually. They lost to Rise. His first singles match in a while. He was actually set to be booked on Reality Wrestling a few days ago. But his match got cut. So there's no love to bounce back here. Japanese buzzsaw, a multi-time contender for the CMB International Championship. Looking to keep building his way up the rankings. It's tonight he takes on a bona fide CMB legend and its first ever tag team champion, Salim Ismail. Don't jinx it. God damn it, Topher. Now Salim's not going to come out here. All your fault. Rip. Salim is mile ready for action. Here in our final matchup of the show. <laughs> I did not, Echo. You should have joined the party last night. I would have told you. You bitch. Cuck. Fuck you, Echo. You know, you broke Gumble's heart. You just took it and tore it into two. That's my friend, guy. As here we go, CMV's very first ever tag team champion. It's Liam Ismail, tag team specialist. This season, no breaking out on his own. Had uh, quite the start to his return. Chance of the uh, light heavyweight championship. Unfortunately, been falling through these past couple weeks. Could use this win to really bounce back. <laughs> Salim Isma ready for action. Mori just absolutely out of his seat right now, jumping up and down. He's such a Salim fan. Here we go. Kenji Murakami, Salim Isma. What it should be a fast paced encounter. Salim, uh, very agile and a high flyer. Salim Isma, also, also very quick on his feet, but uh, more of a submission specialist. And a technician when you get down to it. Most importantly, a showboater. Very, very full of himself is Salim Ismail. Whereas Kenji Murakami practices the art of Zen. He's very calm in the ring. Taking things slowly, not aggressive. There's a short arm shoulder block. <laughs> He's dropping the leg down to the side of the knee right there. Goes for a drop kick, moves out of the way to Salim, closing in now, floats over for a snap. DDT dropping him right on that man bun. Take it overhead with the arm drag. <laughs> I mean, everybody seems to agree Reese Matthews is a fluke champion. 
He's going to seek to prove them wrong at Emergence next Sunday. It's been made official. Mike Crimson, Reese Matthews for the CMB Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. As we get an Irish whip, Kenji Murakami off the ropes right into a drop kick by Salim. Snaps the leg now. Ismail beginning to uh, work on the legs and the spine, you can see right there. Of course, Ismail likes to finish off the majority of his matches with that brutal lion tamer. Digs the knee down to the back of his opponent's neck. So wrenches back on the spine. There's a standing shooting star by Kenji and a kick to the spine of his own. To the ring here, but now goes the Japanese buzzsaw. We're going to prove why they call him just that. Forearm smash! Knock the jaw loose on its hinges right there for the Bollywood boy. Murakami ain't done. We're going to put him in the corner. It's interesting. This is, I think this is two of Mori's favorite calls in the entire world going at it here. He's probably torn right down the middle. Poor Mori. He doesn't know what to do with himself. Who is he cheer for? I understand your dilemma. Lifting Kenji Murakami up to see back elbow by Kenji as he closes the distance, goes to that side slap of doom. A case of the neck breaker said that's a side slap of doom. I don't know what I'm saying the majority of the time. <laughs> Mori couldn't cope with the pressure of who he should side with. As there's a neck breaker by Murakami, hooks the leg middle of the ring, can this speed up to finish things off only on one count. <laughs> Trapping Salim between his legs and maybe try to launch off a couple of elbows to follow through. But Salim, too much hair gel, too much body oil, able to slip three. Free. It's the end of the stream, all right? Leave me alone. Salim with that Randy Savage esque scoop slam as now he beckons Salim to rise to his feet. What the hell is he doing here? Now we're not going to find out. Kenji launching out at him, playing possum there. Slapping down to the canvas. Sunset flip power bomb. Not into the pin, however. Shades of the one and only Sushi X Paul Devine with that one. And now can Oh! Oh, I can just, ah! One, two, only a two count. Kenji in control, though, as he looks to finish beckoning his mouth to rise to his feet. Gonna try for the war. Oh, oh, what is it? Oh. Oh, what is this? Kenji Murakami with an electric chair. Hat Nelson Driver. I was about ready to call the Warriors Conduct. This is a new one, two. Oh, just a two count. Up to the top rope now. Japanese buzzsaw just keeps going and going. That Duracell battery he ain't stopping anytime soon. Salim Groggy rises to his feet off the top row, catches it with a power bomb. What a reversal by Ismail, though, as he says, bitch, my shit, my fuck. I ain't done yet. Salim bringing him to a vertical base. Back rotation, suplex pulled off by the Bollywood boy. That be enough to finish. One, two, oh, not even a two count, I don't think that was. 1.9999999. Salim. Kenji's got to be careful. Salim goes for them legs. I don't know why he's wasting so much time marking his territory in the corner there. He's giving Kenji all that he needs to get back to his feet. Action roll. Closes in. Tilt the world. Hurricane Rana by Murakami. As he now drags Salim out of the corner. Looks like Salim's in La La Land. Gonna take home the win is Kenji. Only a two chow. <laughs> Garage suplex, beautiful reversal by Kenji Murakami. To get himself out of that one standing sea fire then to follow through a move we rarely see here in CMB. One of my favorites though. As Kenji stomps down to the gut, has Salim right where he wants him now. Bringing his boot fucking right down on his elbow. That's just that's some vicious intent behind that move. What up, dynamic off the ropes? Forearm smash misses. 
He gave it a second go, and Al Saleem waiting in, taking too much time, though, trying to plan what he wants to go for. Misses another forearm smash. A forearm smash machine is Kenji. <clears throat> yes, Dynamic, you're late before you ask. This is the last match of the stream. You missed all of Genesis. Suplex by Ismail. <laughs> what a matchup this is. Ben Saleem looking to bring it to an end, however. With that back rotation, suplex a second time. One, two, only a two count. And Salim looking at the turnbuckle, questioning his life choices. How did he get here? <clears throat> As he goes to the top rope. Salim is not a high flyer, ladies and gentlemen. What is he going to try for here? Elbow drop. We know Salim likes to take uh, a large part of his offense after the legendary Randy Savage, but wrestling slam. Drops down to one knee, Salim. <clears throat> Feeling the effects of this match have been very back and forth throughout. Nobody's been in control for, for more than a couple of minutes at a time. Salim going for another pinfall attempt. You're looking to make Kenji exert some energy. Maybe get the win. Nope, just a two count. Close call, though. I do what I want, Dynamic. Spinning soul kick. Salim dodging the forearm. Oh, the power bomb by the Bollywood boy. And if that's not enough, one, two, into the lion tamer. Middle of the ring, no hope for a rope break. Kenji might have to tap, or can he survive? Locked in tight. Is this the end for the Japanese buzzsaw? No, Kenji refuses to give in. And that might have been Salim's best shot, but oh, Kenji's still down, man. Salim telling him to get the hell up. The damage is done. Off the ropes. Oh, disaster. He overshot it, though. GG, no re. Oh, third time. Up in the air, back down again. Back rotation, suplex, middle of the ring, hooks the leg. One, two, just a two count. Front headlock by Kenji Murakami. What a match. I did not expect this match to be so good here. To finish off the street out, these two competitors aren't amazing at what they do, but. I just didn't expect that much. As Liam kind of telling Kenji Murakami, get the fuck out my goddamn ring, boy. Eliminating him from the Royal Rumble, and Salim would be going to try to resort to a count out victory at this point. The Lion Tamer couldn't get the job done. As he tells Kenji, if you got what it takes, man, get back up, get in here, let's continue this. Count of three by John Cohn. Now Salim just sees Kenji getting back to his seat instead of going to go out and help him up. Look like good humanitarian he is. Kenji passing right by Salim. Both men at back of the ring. Murakami not about that clean ring entry. Dragging Salim out of the corner. Russian leg sweep. I do believe he is. Uh, Bateman. Probably not right after. He's probably going to wait like 10 minutes or something. He usually does. As Salim now is going to resort to taunting the CMB Universe live in attendance here. Look at everybody on the outside with the thumbs down. They don't appreciate it. They're big Kenji fans. Oh! Spanish fly by Murakami. As now up on the second turnbuckle. Why is Kenji sizing him up for here? Kenshasa! Off the second turnbuckle, shin straight to the face. Kenji, instead of capitalizing, though, decides to pander to his fans live here from Miami, Florida. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kenji Murakami through the ropes. Tornado DDT. Really giving the fans here. Their money's worth it. They, they, they get a champ. This is awesome. Oh, Salim, no sell, no, like the G that he is, like the veteran, the champ. GDT to Kenji Murakami. 
These two are putting on a fucking classic pay-per-view worthy matchup here as Salim again is going to soak in the disdain that the universe have for him. I believe Salim Ismail might have tried for a uh, another lion tamer there. Kenji Murakami not allowing it to happen as the Japanese buzzsaw. Got to give this another go. Electric chair, half Nelson Driver. One, two. Huh? <laughs> what the hell? Salim is. What's this now? Missile drop kick double boots to the chest. By Murakami, how did Salim kick out of that second driver though? What the hell is this match? We're getting another uh, another shoot fight like we did on Reality Wrestling the other day. Between Shay Thomas and fucking Diablo. So we get a, a fourth back rotation suplex by Salim. <laughs> I'm not done with you. Liam, this is the biggest mistake in this matchup. He's taken way too much time to poke and, and prod the, the, the fans live in attendance instead of focusing on Kenji as he gets a Hurricane Rana there. Murakami trying for a random pin. Any maneuver at this point might be enough to get the job done. Not just yet, though. Close one, but no cigar. <laughs> Again, slipping through the heads. There's simply too much body oil on deck for Kenji to get that firm grip. Forearm smash attempted by Ismail as Kenji. Again, with the sunset flip power bomb. Down on one knee. So late into this matchup. So much taken out of these two men. One, two. Kenji Murakami gets the win. What a match. Round of applause to these two men bringing the house down. Didn't expect too much. I was blown away. What a collision. The Kinshasa gets the job done for Kenji Murakami. Great matchup and a great win for the Japanese buzzsaw. As always, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, make sure you follow me so you get some alerts when I go live. Next show, of course, will be on Monday, Fusion, the go-home show for Emergence, which is going to be next Sunday. If you like the show, you want your call involved with it, communityuniverse.4motion.com is our website. You can get a link to it by typing exclamation point join in the chat. All the past episodes on my YouTube channel linked on my Twitch info page. Head on over there if you want to see... Uh, <clears throat> If you want to see all that, uh, all that good stuff. So I love you guys, and I will see you all on Monday for some fusion.